So hello everyone, Micro Hunter here and welcome to another Saturday live stream. Um, yeah, here we are again doing a little bit of uh, microscopy today. Um, I hope uh, that uh, you found uh, the channel well and uh, yeah, today maybe a little bit over an hour, maybe one hour 15 minutes, one hour 30 minutes, I don't know. Um, I want to uh, show you uh, today different microscopy contrasting techniques. Um, so, in other words, I would like to give you a more or less complete overview of what you can do, even um, at home, do-it-yourself uh, style, um, to make your own filters. Um, but I also would like to show you some, some other contrasting techniques like DIC and face contrast, which unfortunately you cannot uh, do at home. Well, um, I hope uh, that uh, the sound again is working. I always, always have to check because uh, some time ago I accidentally started the live stream and nobody could hear me. So um, if uh, everything is fine, please uh, give me a thumbs up or maybe you can tell me if uh, um, the sound sounds okay or not distorted. Um, as more and more uh, people start to join in, um, I want to now use this opportunity now also to say a very big thank you to all of you to the whole microscopy community. I already a few days ago I did make a video ab about that but I want to show you something something arrived a few days ago in my uh, post office box po post box look at this <laughs> it's uh, the YouTube creator award because we now passed 100,000 subscribers okay I have to <laughs> yeah um, and uh, yeah I would like uh, to thank uh, the whole community for this uh, I think it's a it, it's a great thing uh, it kind of shows that uh, microscopy is, is liked um, all around the world and uh, yes I would also of course um, encourage you in, uh, that you also subscribe to um, other microscopy channels uh, that are um, out there I mean there are more and more microscopy channels starting to appear more and more people start to pick up the hobby um, and uh, yeah please also show your love a little bit and also subscribe uh, to their channels a little bit it's very import important um, also as a, as a motivator but let me put the, the, the creator award away a little bit because I need the space um, for um, yeah for for doing a little bit of microscopy today. So I'm going to put it on the floor, and um, I would like to um, yeah simply give you a rough overview of uh, what uh, I'm going to do today. So I've already prepared the specimens that um, I would like to show you using different contrasting techniques. So I'm not going to um, spend too much time today in actually preparing specimens, but I actually already got them ready because I would like to focus a little bit more on the filters. Now I have already made in my other YouTube channel because I've got a second one called Micro Hunter Microscopy, very similar name. Um, I've already made a YouTube video there on how to make your own filters, but I did not yet make a video yet where I really compare all of the different contrasting techniques with different specimens. And I was said, said I'm, maybe I'm going to do that today because uh, there have been requests uh, by some, some of you. And, and uh, um, I do also receive some emails that uh, people want, were asking me, okay, can, can you please uh, show me certain co contrasting techniques? Uh, yeah? And I, I would like uh, to do that today. Um, so um, if you have any specific questions um, relating to anything microscopy related, please do uh, write it in the chat box. Um, and because so many people are actually posting comments, which is great, um, sometimes I have a difficult time actually finding the questions which are directed to me. So maybe you could simply write down an at microbe hunter or an at Oliver um, so that I know that uh, I can jump directly to that question and try to answer it. Um, as long as it is somehow microscopy related or biology related, I will try to, um, I will attempt uh, to, to answer them. So what I would like to do first is, is um, I want to give you a short view over my setup. And um, I'm going to switch over to the microscope view now. Uh, and let's ha please have a look at the, at, at the one here in the corner, okay? Yeah. So I'm, uh, so this is basically a one microscope, but I've uh, set up another microscope here. That's my, <laughs> that's me here now. And yeah, and I've set up another microscope over there. This one over here. Uh, this is a Euromex um, eye scope, um, and uh, I set it up because. Um, I'm going to use this uh, microscope over here to demonstrate some contrasting techniques which my Olympus that I normally use is not able to do. Okay, It's able to do other things, but certain things it's not able to do. For this reason, I, I had to set up uh, this, uh, this one um, over there. Okay, So it's also connected with a camera up here. You can see there's a camera up here. Um, also connected to the computer um, and yeah so that's uh, simply so that you understand what's going on a little bit because I won't be able um, to show you um, um, basically the stage um, of, of, of this microscope all the time because I don't have a camera there okay so just so that you um, 
um, yeah, um, are a little bit aware of this. Yeah, um, 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 there is already a question I have heard about F U C A and what is it? On sorry, I don't know it either. Okay, of F U C A. Um, sorry, don't know about this. I, I'd have to uh, research this. Okay. Um, um, and so if uh, someone was uh, wants to go into the, this is a hobby do you have any recommendation for what model they should uh, uh, buy uh, get so basically a microscope model um, I get very often questions like this which microscope model is the best which brand should I get and um, honestly um, there is not so much of a difference I would say um, um, if you get yourself a microscope with a condenser I'm not going to talk about this okay uh, because only the, the cheap the very cheap microscopes don't have condensers so um, but there are also yeah introductory microscopes but uh, as long as they have a condenser like this at the bottom of the stage and generally you'll be fine um, microscopes cost around I wouldn't go below about three to four hundred uh, dollars or euros. So that's a little bit about the bottom one. And um, if you check my other channel, then I've made some some reviews. I would say to a large extent, it's a little bit of a question of taste. Um, yeah, I've made uh, over the last couple of months review videos of uh, from the company Euromax because they were also supporting the channel. But um, 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 yeah, Swift, um, I've also made uh, some videos, but um, it depends also a little bit of where you're living in the world because in the different countries, different brands are more and more um, are more common than others. Yeah? So I would probably um, yeah, um, uh, yeah, also base my decision on this, okay? Um, oh, the first universal common ancestor. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That that's biology related. Okay. The first universal common ancestor. This is basically relates to the first cell uh, that uh, all living things uh, can be traced back to. Is the first universal common ancestor. Okay. So, but let's uh, for right now. I just want to talk a little bit about the the the, um, the condenser here. If your microscope has a condenser, and many of them do, then please check that your microscope has a filter holder. And there are different ways now how this can be. This one here is an Olympus one, a traditional Olympus one, and there is a pop-on filter holder. Um, this one is blue because um, it uh, if, if you're using a halogen lamp, um, it kind of uh, uh, narrows the it filters away the hot. Uh, infrared uh, uh, light um, and uh, there are other microscopes around um, basically um, where they, which have a swing out filter holder okay so there's a little hinge there and you can swing it out okay and sometimes people are not able to see something and then they kind of think that the microscope is broken because the the filter is kind of um, yeah, swung out halfway and then it kind of blocks the light here okay and then they think that actually the microscope has a problem but actually it's simply the filter which is not uh, all the way um, in okay so please check this um, however the one that the microscope that I have standing over there um, has a different filter hole that looks like this and it can be slid in okay and uh, this is uh, now uh, something where we can become a little bit creative okay and uh, what I would like to do is, is um, I would like simply like to uh, first show you a little bit some of the filters here and what they're able to do and then we can look at a few uh, specimens here and then later on um, also with my other microscope the first thing that I always recommend you to to do uh, or to make is, is a so-called a dark field filter um, and it is simply nothing more than a black cardboard ring this I, I 3d printed this one Okay, simply because it's faster this way, but what you can do is you can take some cardboard or you can take some plastic film, foil packaging material like, like this one over here. Yeah? It's, it's, and, and you lose some cardboard in the center. Um, and uh, that's basically it. Okay, and what this does is the following. It uh, makes the background black, um, but the specimens, the cells or whatever you look at, uh, bright. Um, what is really important is, is that the diameter of, of this central disk and um, this is something that you have to determine by experimentation because if it is too small uh, then the background will not be dark okay so for example I made a whole range of different ones simply to try it out okay with different diameters um, as we deprinted them but um, again you probably want to do this with cardboard or you can use a dark um, ink uh, pen um, marker to, to make those rings on, on some plastic foil okay so this is a, a, essentially and then I found out that uh, for my microscope 18 millimeter um, is fine and it goes all the way up to a magnif uh, I can use uh, the magnification all the way up to to 40 times 
okay um, so and once you know that diameter uh, then um, you can uh, try different variations so what I've done here is I've uh, used uh, yeah uh, now I used a different uh, uh, color of a 3d printed plastic a blue one and different thicknesses but you can also use a marker or you can use some blue nail polish um, or, or, or you can even print it using a printer okay um, and you can uh, make uh, this a uh, different color and then the background will be blue. Or uh, this is a called Reinberg illumination. This is of course you can, um, and here I used also markers. You, know, you can uh, make the, you can make the, the, the border uh, red and then the specimen will appear red on a um, blue background. Yeah? So all of these here, there's a Reinberg, yeah, these are the ones with the colors and dark field they kind of are all based on the same um, on the same principle and we're just going to have a look um, at some of them and basically the take home message uh, today and that's kind of like 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 the main uh, point is, is is there is not one technique that's better than the others um, it really depends um, a lot on the specimen and what goals you want to achieve okay because uh, for some specimens it really works very well and you get very nice results and for other specimens you don't see anything okay so I would like uh, to to simply show this uh, to, to you now okay um, so um, I got a couple of other things I didn't get a notification about this streaming I'm glad I checked just in case I found it the thing is the following usually about 10 to 12 hours in advance of the live stream um, I will always uh, basically post uh, so that means there is a um, uh, kind of a countdown timer okay and you can see a trailer um, maybe if you click the bell button then you may you might get a notification okay um, so uh, or if you subscribe to it but usually on Saturday um, uh, I'm, uh, at this time I always am online occasionally I'm not and in this case please check the community post of the channel so their community post it's like a little blog uh, where I can write messages um, and sometimes if for whatever reason I'm not able to uh, do the live stream because I'm not around uh, then um, I will post this okay um, so this is a little bit uh, the thing or also on my webpage microbehunter.com um, I will usually uh, several hours before it I, I will post uh, and then you should be able to see the the, 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 the uh, video with with the live stream as well so let's do the following this here is a cross-section of uh, of a corn of, of, of maize okay CS means a uh, cross-section um, and uh, we're just going to look at this um, uh, under bright field um, and then uh, I'm going to change the filters and I'm going to show you uh, how this looks like. Um, yeah, so this I need to turn up the light a little bit. So that's a typical monocot uh, 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 stem. Okay, um, I think of some time ago I, al I always have the same standard. Uh, yeah, so this is bright field. It's the, the regular, uh, the regular, um, let me close the, the condenser a little bit. It's the regular, um, yeah illumination technique that, that most of, of, of you are able to see and uh, now let's try um, how does it look with dark field and uh, you'll be probably a little bit surprised maybe even a little bit disappointed so I'm going to put uh, this in here okay yeah so I put the dark field filter in here and I put it in into the into the microscope and have a look what we're able to see this is and I have to open the condenser and this is basic uh, I'm going to turn up the light all the way and this is what I'm able to see here and what do we see? We see a lot of dust and dirt and actually the cells that were so nice before just barely a uh, barely visible in the background. So uh, this is a typical example of a specimen where dark field does not work well and because actually we're able to see all of these bright areas here that's a, some dust you know let's try to get it into focus here look at it, all of the dust like 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 I don't know uh, stars <laughs> in the night sky yeah I mean, it does look kind of nice and contrasty, but the things that I want to see, um, I'm not able to see. And the reason is, is that the, the specimen itself um, um, has too similar of a refractive index to the surrounding medium um, or and or it is simply not thick enough. So it's not able to redirect the light into the um, into the objective. So this kind of shows that dark field uh, evidently is, is not uh, the ideal uh, yeah, technique here. Okay. Um, why is dark field uh, still sometimes useful because um, you're able to see very tiny objects because they're quite bright like for example um, all of the tiny dust grains and, and so on um, even if they're very small and difficult to see otherwise because of the high contrast you're able to see them well as a matter of fact and this is where it becomes a little bit interesting you are not able 
to actually see objects of the size of viruses because they are below the resolution limit of a light microscope. Um, however, structures that small um, can be seen with dark field as a blurry spot because simply the contrast is so high. Uh, you're not able to see any details, but you're simply able to see a blurry spot. And this is a little bit the, the, the advantage and also the disadvantage of dark field. The advantage being that you um, can see structures that have very high contrast. The disadvantage, also things that you don't want to see, like for example, dust. Yeah? like all of these things here, right? So I just wanted to show this to you, um, okay? So this is uh, the first specimen. Um, let's uh, change, I'm going to take it out again. Okay, now it's a little bit too bright, okay? So I have to go down with the light intensity again. Um, and uh, let's have a look now how it looks like uh, with uh, the, yeah, the one with blue, okay? In here, and of course, we are probably not gonna see a huge difference here as well, okay? Um, yeah. Uh, same principle, but you now see, of course, that the background is blue. Um, yeah, the contrast is therefore not quite as high, but evidently the specimen is, is not suitable um, for this type of, of technique. Okay, so uh, what, what I would like to do now, therefore, is I would like to show you how this um, specimen now looks um, also um, in, um, yeah, let's say in, in phase contrast um, and also uh, maybe in DIC. Okay, so I'm going to move over. I have to now change the microscope. Okay, so and uh, let's put this in here. Let's again go bright field. Okay, so that's again just like you've seen before. And I'm not able to do phase. Uh, I'm not able to do dark field with with this one here. So yeah. yeah, so that is and it's actually a very thin specimen. It's not one of the nicest ones because it's relatively thin. So, uh, but now let's have a look uh, at DIC. So I put in the I have a little uh, prism down here. Okay. I have to push this in and then um, I have to go up with the light a little bit and then I get DIC and it's also not the best DIC specimen because it's so thin but um, essentially when I turn this uh, lever up here can you see this there's a little knob that I can turn yeah I'm able to shift I'm able to shift uh, yeah um, the, the prism um, and then I'm able to also get a color change yeah so also using polarized light. So again here, it's nice to play around, but I'm really not getting in any specific effect here. Um, so we've looked at bright field, um, um, a dark field was, and so I'm now going to switch over and I'm going to go now into phase contrast, okay? And this is at 40 times how phase contrast looks like. Yeah. And again, we're not able to see uh, yeah, um, so much of a difference, okay? So, um, no, just a second, this one over here is phase contrast and I have to open it and turn up the light. And, but you see over here again, not so much of a yeah, huge difference here. As a matter of fact, rather dark. I'm going to increase the light by pulling out the prism here. Yeah. So essentially, um, I chose this uh, specimen here because actually this is a nice uh, demonstration now that for this specimen, probably bright field is just the best technique to use. Okay, uh, because I'm not really getting uh, such of an, yeah, nicer images using the other techniques. Yeah? That's the, the reason why I've chosen this one here as, as, as a first demonstration because many people think or some people think uh, they write me emails, oh, I want to upgrade my microscope. I really want to have face contrast. And this is, yeah, what do you want to look at? Uh, because maybe for the specimens that you want to look at, face contrast is not even necessary or even the best in the technique okay so that is a little bit the the the, the thing that I, I just wanted to show you here but i've got a whole bunch of other specimens where this issue is very very different okay so i'm going to um, now have a look again at some of the questions here um yeah so that's about the notification so again there is a question for me um what if i don't have that knob so maybe um I don't know which knob you're talking about now. Um, if you're uh, talking about this knob up here, yeah, um, I tell you, uh, almost no microscope has this because this is a DIC, and uh, you need uh, essentially, um, yeah, you need to talk one of to the big microscope manufacturers um, for a DIC microscope, and it is pretty heavy on your wallet. Okay, um, I, don't, I myself don't understand why it's so expensive, um, but uh, it's uh, a technique that's it's fairly expensive. But most of uh, of the microscopes um, actually have a, a lever, uh, have a, a condenser like this with a lever. Okay, so you can try all of the other you can try all of the other uh, uh, techniques here. Okay, so um, and what is the difference between DIC and polarized light? Um, yes, uh, that is. Uh, 
DIC uses polarized light, but it is not traditional polarized light microscopy. Um, it uses polarized light and then the light is the polarized light is split up into two light paths using a, a so-called Wollaston prism. It goes through the specimen, then it goes through another prism, it goes back together again, and then the light interferes. Complicated physics, okay, but um, it's uh, optically uh, uh, quite a little bit more advanced. Okay, but it used DIC uses polarized light, but it is not traditional polarized light microscopy. Okay, so um, so um, uh, but I'm going to show you because uh, some people say that uh, yeah, we can't afford that. Yes, uh, but I, I'm, I'm just going to say it's it's probably not necessary all the time. Okay, so um, that's the, the the thing here. Okay, is the alternatives to DLC simple to implement, like pla uh, plastic or Hoffman modulation contrast? Um, I did not do so much with Hoffman modulation contrast, but I've heard um, that some people actually have DIC, uh, no DIC, do-it-yourself DIY, do-it-yourself uh, solutions using Hoffman modulation. Uh, I think they have also used some, some polarization filters. I've read some articles where people actually were able to do that. Um, and I think if I'm correctly informed, this is something that you can do yourself, but DIC, because it uses those special prisms, you cannot make yourself, unfortunately. But I'm going to show you that with oblique illumination, you can actually get a similar effect later. Okay. Uh, I've always wondered, uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's basically, um, yeah. Um, so you need to, to contact, uh, uh, basically, um, they don't, uh, you, you cannot just buy DIC off the, um, of Amazon like this. Um, however, I have seen some fairly good DIC microscopes uh, sold second hand. Ooh, see, this is now sometimes the case when my camera goes off. Okay, so here we go again. Yeah, I don't know why I actually said that the camera should be switched, should not switch itself off after some time, but for whatever reason it's doing that. So, um, yes, yeah, so this was basically the first specimen to illustrate a little bit. So I'm going to show you now another one, um, another specimen here. Um, and I'm going to show you now the a, a very uh, interesting, not an interesting one, but uh, one that I, yeah, that is, uh, these are E. coli bacteria. Okay, so I'm going to use this here now again, my microscope here in bright field. Um, that's the wrong one here. So, and uh, I need to go up with the magnification and let's have a look at some bacteria. And these are ear bubbles, okay? And I have to find them because they are so small that uh, they can be difficult to find. And you see I've lost the focus, of course, and uh, it started to evaporate again as well. Okay, and I need to close this. Let me quickly, so. Uh, and I think I'm going to show you just in a second of why. Uh, let me quickly look through the microscope. Okay, need to find. Okay, just a second. Still not, uh, because the sample already started to dry up a little bit, I see. No, it should be okay. But the, but you're going to see in a second why phase contrast is then such an advantage. I just have to find the E. coli bacteria that were very dense. Just a second, give me a second. That's usually the demonstration effect. But it could quite well be that I'm ah, yeah, a little bit uh, focusing on the wrong thing. But actually it's quite good that we're struggling a little bit because then you're going to see immediately the advantage of phase contrast. So all of these things that you see here, these are of course air bubbles, okay? But where the bacteria? That's the thing that I would like to know. Okay, and uh, I, I mean, I already see them very lightly, but um, very difficult to see, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is, is let's uh, try to uh, um, our luck a little bit with phase contrast. So, um, because, and then let's hope that uh, we're going to be a little bit luckier this way. Because, now you're able to see, no, it's also not a very good, it's also not a very good specimen here. I have to find the place here because this was full, but you are now able to see that there are some darker structures in the background, okay, those dark dots, which uh, are bacteria, okay. Um, but it's always a typical demonstration thing that maybe, Ah, here, here we are. I was looking at the ear. Look, this is the, how the ear, uh, the body evaporates. Do you see all of those dark little uh, 
dots that you see in the background, these are E. coli bacteria. Okay, look, the water is evaporating. That's why the air bubble is increasing coming from the right. But uh, over here, th those tiny little those tiny little dots that you see, these are bacteria. And those bacteria appear to be dark on a, um, yeah, um, on a brighter background. And now I'm going to show you um, how this looks like in bright field. Okay, so all I have to do is, is I have to switch over here. And this is now bright field. Okay, I'm going to close the condenser to increase the contrast. And you're almost not able to see them. Okay, um, because bacteria are transparent. So why am I showing this to you? To illustrate to you that if you want to observe bacteria very well, I'm just switching over again, opening the condenser. Okay, if you want to see bacteria, then phase contrast is actually the way to go. Because phase contrast changes differences in refractive index, bacteria have a different refractive index, to brightness. Yeah, and now you see the, all those tiny little dots, these are all E. coli bacteria. I know they're E. coli because I grew, I've grown them on the Petri dish and I just prepared the slide uh, before. Okay, so now let's have a look how this looks like in DIC. Okay, so I, I move in the DIC slider again. Okay, um, I have to change now um, also here the correct uh, prism. Okay, so I'm going to this for number, number seven is for, for the 60x and I go all the way up to 60. Yeah. I close the condenser, I go up all the way with the light and this is now, you're also able to see the bacteria, but if you look very closely, um, you're going to see that the bacteria, they look a little bit brighter on one side and darker on the other side. So they look a little bit three dimensional and that is typical for DIC. Yeah. Again, I'm going to now do the following. I'm going to switch over by pulling out the, the prism. I'm going to switch over directly to bright field, reduce the light, close the condenser to increase contrast, yeah? and you're barely able to see the bacteria. Okay, um, You're still able to see them, um, yeah, but it's, it's difficult to see. So um, essentially what I'm, and here you see the air bubble coming from the, from the right. <laughs> okay, um, so this was basically a short demonstration of, of um, that certain techniques um, are suitable for, for, for certain um, yeah, specimens. Okay, um, so I, I would like to have a look again at some of the questions here. Uh, uh, I forgot where I stopped. I, um, okay, um, so we can uh, is the alternative simpler Im to implement is DIC mostly or always used with epi uh, DIC is always used with light coming from the bottom so um, basically not epi illumination epi means uh, from the top uh, could confocal laser microscopy be done in a DIY setup who heaven's sake uh, honestly uh, I know that universities are experimenting a lot by doing things DIY um, I've never heard about confocal laser scanning because what you need to do with confocal laser scanning is you need a, to, you need a computer to put together the image again. Um, so um, essentially what you're doing is, is uh, with confocal laser you're kind of uh, rastering the, the, the specimen and uh, you are basically then assembling um, a picture um, on a computer. Um, I don't know if, if um, I wouldn't be able to do that, um, but um, I can, I'm quite sure that maybe um, some universities or so that uh, they are experimenting with different setups like this. Yeah? Um, uh, okay, if you have a moment, can you turn the gain down? Okay, yeah, thank you for the, uh, thank, thank you for the, for the uh, recommendation. If, if, uh, the, if we get some distortion, uh, I'm turning down the gain a little bit. I hope that maybe the sound is a little bit better now. Okay, um, yeah, um, so um, how do you know that they're E. coli bacteria? Yes, this is actually a, a, a quite a relevant question. Um, I know that they're E. coli bacteria because I've grown them on a Petri dish because I've uh, obtained a source of E. coli bacteria from the drugstore. Um, they sell freeze-dried E. coli bacteria in capsules for people to eat. Um, if they have uh, digestive problems. So for example, some people who've uh, taken antibiotics or who have a messed up digestive system yeah, and have problems um, um, because uh, then diarrhea, for example, then you can try to rebuild and regenerate 
the bacterial uh, composition of your intestine by swallowing bacteria, the right ones. So essentially, um, I've obtained those E. coli bacteria because they are not harmful, because they can be eaten, and I've grown them on a Petri dish. Okay, that, 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 That's why. Yeah. Um, so uh, because you don't want to play around with or mess around with unknown bacteria. Huh? Um, what's the difference between dark field and phase contrast? Um, dark field, which uses those uh, filters here, essentially um, block out the light of the microscope, making everything dark. But the light that is able to pass on the side here, okay, on, on the side, on the periphery, when it bounces against an object, a cell, then it starts to shine up light. It's a little bit like this when you have a dark room and there is some sun shining into the room and the room is otherwise dark, then you can also see the dust floating around um, yeah, yeah, uh, because uh, it basically it's being lit by the sunlight, right? Um, but the background uh, in the room is dark and it's, it's a, a similar here. Um, you essentially make uh, yeah, the background dark, but you only get the indirect light uh, which bounces off from the specimen. Yeah? So this is um, essentially a very common technique and phase contrast is uh, um, optically way more advanced. Phase contrast converts transparent objects like bacteria and makes them darker. Um, this requires um, special uh, phase contrast objectives. Um, they have a, a so-called a, um, a ring uh, on it and you need a special phase contrast condenser. And not only that, those two, the condenser and the ob uh, objective, they must match each other. So you cannot simply mix, mix them, but they have to be designed to work uh, uh, together. Yeah? So this is um, actually a, a thing. Yeah? Um, so uh, le let me quickly, uh, uh, where do you buy phase contrast? I mean, uh, there are some companies, even over Amazon, which um, as, uh, when you buy a microscope, then it will tell you that it can be upgraded to phase contrast or the microscope is already equipped with phase contrast. Usually two or three objectives, usually the 10 times and the 40 times or the 100 times um, objective is um, yeah, phase for phase contrast, but for each one of them, you also need to have a separate um, yeah, filter yeah, for, for the condenser. Okay, um, so they are available, but honestly, I, um, I, I've um, also got, got them second hand. Uh, but uh, uh, again, I always would say is this um, may, maybe the expectations are sometimes too high. Okay, so for some sam samples, it's not so suitable. And uh, why not stay with that? Um, I'm going to now show you a, a water sample with some algae. Okay, so this is a water sample, and uh, we're going to just uh, have a look at this uh, on phase contrast and uh, DIC and, and, and dark field and, and, and everything, okay? So I hope that uh, this works again. Mm -hmm. So this is again bright field. Let's have a look here. Ah, wow, that's coincidence. Do you know what this is here? This is right in the center. That's the scale of a butterfly or of a moth. I don't know how it found its way into the water sample. Okay, that's a yeah, the scale of a butterfly or a moth. Yeah, you, you find it. So this is actually a water sample with algae. Um, and um, I don't know, maybe I'm able to find the worms somewhere. I've got again some Iolosoma worms in here and some, some yeah. Um, let me see, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go down with the magnification a little bit um, because this makes everything, maybe we're a little bit lucky, maybe we're able to find, I don't know where it is. There, there was actually a worm. Um, there's some some ostracods. If we don't find it, it's also okay. But it's just it was a little bit fun observing it. I don't know maybe where it crawled to. I made a video of it then because it was kind of fun to look at. But if not, it's also okay. Uh, sometimes they uh, uh, there is a little bit of movement going on here. So this is simply a water sample that I had, uh, yeah, stored here with a whole bunch of algae. And uh, but again, if we're not able to find it, it's also okay. But uh, yeah, sometimes I'm uh, <laughs> I'm eager to to find it. <laughs> Could be that it crawled somewhere, and I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay, so let's leave it at that. Um, so um, this is now bright field. Uh, so uh, we go up a little bit again with the magnification. Yeah. Um, and uh, the advantage of bright field, as you already know, is, is you see the natural colors. Um, the algae are green, of course, because of, of uh, yeah, 
um, the chlorophyll. So and um, yeah, let's my phase contrast is only at 40 times. So this is again bright field. Okay. And uh, let's do the following. Let's go phase contrast 40 times. Okay, so bright field. And I have to change over and put in the phase contrast annulus. Open it. And this is how it looks in phase contrast. Okay. Nothing special really. Okay. Um, the thing is, is that I have to open the, the, the condenser all the way. And this, of course, reduces the... Um, this reduces the depth of field as well. Yeah. So um, ultimately, I have to tell you for water samples as such, if you just want to observe uh, some water samples, there is not a huge advantage uh, for phase contrast. Yeah. But if you want to look at some of the bacteria that might be present, yeah. so maybe you're in the background you're able to see small tiny dots a little bit in the gray area, yeah. those tiny, uh, tiny dots. I mean, uh, if I have an arrow over here, let me just turn on the arrow uh, yeah up oh, no I'm moving unfortunately the whole thing here uh, arrow I have to do it like this okay now I can move it right so maybe those tiny dots maybe these could be some cellular debris or some tiny bacteria or so yeah? and they would be invisible otherwise because they're simply too transparent yeah? so now let's have a look um, at how this would look in DIC and then later on um, I didn't forget about this I want to show you also some polarization obviously and in D this is how it looks like in DIC. I can change now the background color, usually like blue, because it kind of uh, imitates uh, the uh, yeah, impression of water. Let's turn the arrow off. Yeah. And uh, if I now focus a little bit, uh, and if I maybe close down the condenser a little bit, um, in DIC, uh, what I get is, is I get a little bit the impression of, um, yeah, of, of, uh, of depth. Okay, so in other words, uh, it looks a little bit like if structures kind of standing out a little bit. Yeah, uh, the worm is in the bottom left. Okay, 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 okay. Did it just? Somebody saw the worm, and I kind of. Okay, because. Let me see. I don't know. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. You know what? Give me, give me a second. Um, I'll try to see what happened to it. Could be that it kind of went all the way to the edge somewhere. Uh, but ah, it stopped moving. I'll tell you why. Here it is. Ah, I found it, and and I need to tell you a little uh, because there's something. Yeah. Here it is. That's uh, Ayurlozoma. Yeah. So let's uh, focus on this guy a little bit here. So that is the. Here it is. Okay. Um, yeah. So that is now DIC. Um, then I, uh, this is is bright field. Okay. And uh, now let's have a look at phase contrast at 40 times at 40x. Unfortunately, I don't have it smaller. I have to flip over again, and this is how it looks like. I have to open the condenser. This is how it looks in DIC. Again, the magnification is much higher now because uh, um, not in DIC in, in phase contrast. Uh, it's because it's uh, the forty times uh, objective. Yeah. So um, I, I do not get natural colors with uh, phase contrast. So this is kind of a little bit the the, the disadvantage, and uh, there is another effect in phase contrast. Um, you don't see it so well. Yeah, you see it over here with with the the bubbles. Uh, but I just want to use this here to illustrate this. This is a so-called an artifact. Um, where is this? Uh, let me show you the arrow. That structures in phase contrast often seem to have here's the, here's the worm again. Seem to have this kind of bright fringe around it. Okay. It's darker, so, and then it's it's brighter again around it. So that's uh, basically an artifact which increases the contrast, uh, but is actually not natural. 
in that sense yeah so you can again see you can see certain structures better this way but it is does not face contrast doesn't does obviously does not uh, give you the the natural colors and, and as such okay so um yeah so let's see here we are again let me flip this out again and i need to flip on. there are so many adjustments that i have to make every time huh? yeah, that, now i don't even know where it is anymore yeah so this is a little bit yeah so let's have now a, a look how this look, would look like in dark field um with uh, so i have to move it over to the other microscope okay so let's take it out here let's uh, switch over to the other microscope okay and uh, i'm gonna take it out here and let's put it in over here yeah, so that's a, again bright field obviously so on, so far nothing new okay and I'm going to now put in over here uh, the dark field filter. It's too dark. I have to open the condenser. Uh -huh, still too dark. I have to turn up the light. And this is how it looks like in dark field. And I think uh, I have already made my, can make my point here that evidently this specimen is one that is very suitable for dark field. See, you can also see some other little critters floating around here. Yeah, much better. Yeah. Um, so a question, is this algae a permanent slide? No, it's not a permanent slide. I just made it before the, the, um, uh, the session here uh, because otherwise there would not be any movement on it. Uh, and permanent slides, they have to be preserved. And then there is, it's gonna, it's, it has to be dead. And then I, I would also not be able to see any movement like for example, the worm. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if you convert, if you make permanent slides of watches samples like this one here, then that's difficult to do. I mean, of course you can do that. I've done that, but the water samples are usually very sensitive. Um, so this means uh, usually when you dry the specimen, you have to dry it and you have to add mounting medium and all this kind of uh, distorts uh, or destroys sometimes the specimen. So I feel that in yeah, for, for algae and water samples, it's usually better to simply um, observe them as they are. Um, I've also got some, some permanent slides of algae, of water samples like this, and over, over the years they lose color. The chlorophyll, the green pigment, uh, starts to bleach um, and loses color. So it looks actually nicer if you use a fresh sample and you can also see movement. Yeah? Um, but then again, yeah, um, I've got some, some commercial um, yeah, permanent slides as well but uh, making them is a little bit of a challenge. So that is basically shows uh, very nicely uh, the dark field. Um, let's go up a little bit with the magnification, okay? Um, and here this is now 40 times in dark field and you can already see that, well, actually, yeah, it looks kind of nice and contrasty, but if you look very carefully, then you're able to say, well, it does look a little bit blurrier, okay? Blurry, yeah, it's not quite as crisp. And that is correct. And the reason is, is because um, we're blocking out uh, some of the light um, and every time when there's an edge you know, then for example i'm going to take another one over here right? there, there is an edge right um, yeah where it's between black and, and, and where the light is able to pass and every time when there is an edge you have a uh, light rays bending around it yeah? because they're also like waves bending around it and this um, causes uh, uh, diffraction patterns and a little, uh, adds a little bit of the blurriness <coughs> so that's kind of like the nature of, of physics you know um, that uh, every time when there is some kind of an obstacle in, in, in the light path, then you have got light rays bending around it and this kind of uh, reduces uh, the, the resolution. Yeah? Uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, um, uh, a little bit um, yeah, the reason. So, um, and uh, yeah, what I would like to do now is, is um, I wanna show you now um, this filter here, okay? Uh, where it's not completely black, but blue, because um, blue is nice because it kind of gives again the impression of water. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it out. Okay. Ah, by the way, look, 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 look. I've now taken out the filter halfway. I'm going to close it a little bit. Um, look, I've taken it down halfway. And this is called now oblique illumination because what you're able to see now, a little bit like in DIC, you're able to see, I need to show you now uh, again with the arrow. Here is the arrow, okay. Look here at this one here. Do you actually see on the bottom edge here, it's a little bit darker. And then the top edge here, it's a little bit brighter. It almost looks like there is a shadow on the bottom side, yeah? 
because indeed there is because the light is now approaching from one side or over here as well this edge here is a little bit darker and this edge over here is a little bit brighter it almost looks like the light is striking it from the side because it actually is because the filter is now not in the center i kind of moved it out halfway yeah this is referred to as oblique illumination and sometimes with oblique illumination you are able to see indeed bacteria better um, than with just regular bright field yeah so this is actually um, a method that kind of simulates or emulates or imitates DIC, but it's significantly cheaper. Okay, so this is actually something that would uh, would uh, um, yeah you can experiment around. And some people, if you Google online, some people have uh, really made uh, remarkably good images like this, way better than what you're able to see here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So or if you move it in a little bit more, yeah, then you're able to see that it does look a little bit more. Yeah, um, three-dimensional yeah so this is um, and again a different for different specimens uh, it works differently well so yeah yeah so I'm going to take it out now I'm gonna put in the blue one as promised because I like the blue one because it gives a nice blue background and the contrast to the black is not quite as high okay okay I have to open again the the diaphragm okay and that's basically now with uh, the blue background yeah and uh, yeah maybe we go up a little bit with the light intensity here and yeah. Yeah, we can okay we have to work a little bit also with the condenser yeah, yeah. or um, I can use again a different one because I've made two blue filters with uh, of different intensity so this one I think uh, might be a little bit either brighter or darker I don't know now yeah, this one is a little bit darker. Yeah, it gives you a dark, slightly darker blue. Yeah. So there are, uh, what I just want to say is there are plenty of, of ways uh, to experiment around. Um, or yet uh, another one is, is uh, I'm going to try this one. I have not tried this one yet. It's, it's this one here where it's blue in the center and, and red on the outside. I, I, I actually just used markers. And because the markers are not dark enough, uh, I just uh, overlap two of them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's try this not tried this one yet so I don't know ah yeah yes then you see that the algae actually turned red and the background blue it's kind of it's more more a proof of concept yeah. so that uh, that's called Reinberg illumination where you're able to um, yeah kind of stain the specimens in a different color so basically I made them the green Chlorophyll made now appear red. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's basically um, the thing I just wanted to show you. Um, yeah, let's put this one in again here. And I'm going to again read some of the comments. Um, I need to go back all the way up here. Okay. Uh, let me rephrase the question How can you identify E. coli bacteria? Ah, okay, I get it. Uh, this is getting. <sighs> This is, this, is, this is an advanced question. The question is now, if you have bacteria, how can you identify it? And as a matter of fact, um, when I did uh, my university studies a long time ago, um, then I was actually working in my diploma thesis was about bacterial systematics, which was exactly this question. How do you identify bacteria, especially um, unknown bacteria? And uh, there are a whole range of biochemical tests that you can make. So you have to grow the bacteria in pure culture and you do uh, extraction techniques and then you analyze what is the bacteria made of and then you can check with a database and then you kind of narrow your, it down. That's the fancy way of doing it. These days, if you really want to know what it is, is what you do is you do a DNA test. You grow it in pure culture, you do a DNA test and then you check it with a database. Um, I just want to give you an example. I've just read today in the newspaper that somewhere in the ocean they found this a strange golden looking thing it looked like gold but it's apparently is a living thing and the scientists don't know what it is it looks golden like a golden they call it the golden egg you, because it looked like a golden egg you can google it I just today I read about it and they said it's going to be something living but they have no have no idea what it is so what they've done is you do a DNA test yeah? so and then you check with the database uh, what it is closely a bacteria just by looking at the shape of bacteria you cannot say what it is because bacteria that look very similar under the microscope can be very different 
and bacteria that look very different under, mi under the microscope can actually be quite related. Yeah? So unfortunately, the shape alone under the microscope tells you very little about, uh, about the bacteria. Very interesting question. Um, if I start talking about this, um, I think, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, phase contrast is technically very impressive, but I find it difficult to use probably because bacteria is not so interesting to look at. Yes. Yeah. Um, so phase contrast, it depends really what you want to look at. Okay, um, so if you have specific things that you're interested in, um, yeah, um, uh, why do I use phase contrast? Because for some of my videos, if I just want to show people something and then um, you want to have a little bit more variation in color, and, and so sometimes I throw in a phase contrast clip as well, simply to give a little bit more, more color variation or image variation um, in the videos. That, that, that's the reason why I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I found those scales before. Thank you for uh, solving the puzzle. Yes, uh, there, there are uh, yeah, uh, either moth scales or butterfly scales. Yeah, so they are quite relatively common, yeah? um, especially in house dust if you're able to find them. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go down again. Okay. Uh, this was the question about the permanent slide. Yes. No, the algae are not a permanent slide. I'm, okay, so I'm I'm now down with, uh, done with the the, the quotes. So uh, let's go on a little bit because I still have a few things I want to show you. Um, later, yeah, I've also prepared some 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 for polarization, which I'm gonna do. Yeah, why not show you potato, potato starch grains? Um, a classic. Here, um, okay, <laughs> this is not dark field, so for really giving it away, I'm gonna show a bright field. Um, so. I always have to close it again. So these here are uh, potato, it's too bright, potato starch grains. Uh, yeah, a, a, a classic example. You scratch the surface of potato and, and make a slide, okay? Now those potato starch grains um, are very hard. They're crystalline in structure. And they basically um, are, um, yeah, a traditional or uh, standard example if you wanna use polarized light, okay? Look at all of those strings that you see are just uh, yeah, leftovers from some cells. Let me go to a different, I uh, see here, the water is also already evaporating here a little bit. It's okay. But those are uh, egg-shaped oval structures. These are all potato starch grains. So now let's have a look at how this looks like with uh, uh, dark field, okay? So I'm gonna put this in here, dark field. Um, open the condenser, uh, go up with the brightness, and this is how it looks like. So what you see here uh, quite nicely is, is that you're going to see the starch grain itself as being dark, but the edges are, are bright. Yeah, so that's why it, it kind of looks like, these, they look like bubbles. Yeah? Um, yeah, so again, I'm going to uh, move out the, uh, a little bit, the, the, go down with the light intensity. Yeah? And I'm going to move it out carefully a little bit and then very nice, this is actually a very good example. This is now oblique illumination. Okay, and now you can actually see the, uh, the starch grains really stand out because the light is striking them from one side. Yeah, so it gives kind of this three-dimensional impression. You know, almost a little bit like, like, like DIC. Huh? So this is again, this is uh, the dark field filter uh, moved in halfway. So how does this now look like if I yeah, look <laughs> move it out completely. How does this now look like if I um, use this, the red blue filter from before, this one here, okay? The red blue filter, let's have a look. Yeah, and okay, we need to open this again. And here we see that uh, essentially, yeah, the edges look a little bit red, but otherwise not very spectacular. Okay, so evidently Reinberg, hmm, not so interesting here. Yeah. So, but maybe maybe we can do something else here. Yeah, again, I'm moving it out half half of the way. We get again this <laughs> this old oblique illumination. So, but now let's try something different. Okay, um, I'm now going to use um, um, those polarization polarizing filters. These are uh, linear polarizing filters made of glass. Uh, from old um, from an old camera, 
Um, however, when you want to buy polarizing filters, Amazon or whatever, most likely you're going to buy those plastic sheets. There is a protective film on here, which I did not remove yet. Okay, they are fairly cheap um, and they're linear polarizing filters. Um, if you maybe you know those 3D glasses, they don't work always. Some of them do, some of them don't, depending on which standard you're using. But they are circular polarizing filters and they are a little bit limited because then the orientation needs to fit and then you need to flip it over and sometimes it doesn't work. So I recommend that if you want to play around with polarization, get yourself one of those uh, filters here. I, I, I'm going to be using those here, the same thing. And what is the case is, is if you look, no, I think I'm going to flip over to the desk view again so that you see this. Uh, yeah. Look, um, if you overlap and if you turn it, then, then so in some cases, sometimes it's going to be completely dark. And that's uh, the crossed, yeah? yeah? It's kind of difficult with the reflection. And if you turn it again, it's gonna, it's gonna allow light, it's gonna be clear. Yeah? And then if you turn it, it's going to be dark. So, the, and this dark uh, crossed position is the one that you want. And what you, I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to put the one of them directly on over the lamp of the microscope and the other one directly on top of the slide. So I'm, going to, I'm going to show you. Yeah. So this here, this here is the, 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 the slide. I'm going to put one directly on the top. And of course, I know that the, uh, it's a little bit, uh, it, uh, you got to be careful because uh, the, of bumping the, the, the objective because it's kind of thick. And that's also another reason why I actually recommend those much thinner uh, filters, okay? because otherwise you might bump it. But I'm, I'm going to put now this one over here um, on, the, on the bottom. I'm going to switch again over to the microscope view. Okay, so I'm going to put this now. Yeah, you almost see no difference in brightness. Then um, on, I'm going to put this one over here. Yeah, here are the starch grains. I have to find again a place where it looks kind of better. Okay. And now I'm going to put this one directly on the slide beneath the objective. Okay, there, there's not enough space, not a lot of space. It changes the focus, of course. I have to re I have to find the focus again. If I'm able to find it, I don't know where it is. Uh, I might actually turn the here. Maybe it's easier for me to find it this way. Yes, here we go. Okay, because uh, if you put uh, something thick between there. And by turning the, the, the filter, which is over the lamp, you have to get it into this dark cross position and look how the starch grains look like. Yeah. Those starch grains now uh, look a little bit colorful. They're kind of, now kind of stuck together here. I'm going to increase the light intensity a little bit. Yeah. But this actually shows how, um, yeah, that they're actually quite crystalline in nature. So. This again is an example where polarized light works very well and dark field or Rheinberg illumination really don't work at all. Yeah. So simply to, to illustrate this a little bit. Yeah. Um, so let's have a look here. Um, there is a question. Do you recommend phase contrast for looking at water samples and ciliates? Thanks. Um, I'm going to actually give you a very concrete answer. Uh, no, I don't recommend phase contrast because in many cases water samples are fairly have fairly thick organisms like small worms like I showed you and for thicker specimens phase contrast really does not give very good results. Um, so this is a little bit the thing and also the phase contrast usually goes for, for a 10 times and 40 times objective and 40 times objective usually is already too much for water samples. Yeah? So generally um, phase contrast is good for, uh, for, very, thin, uh, for very thin objects. Yeah? Uh, so for example uh, phase contrast works quite well if you take uh, cheek cells from your own cell phone and put it on a slide. Um, it actually looks very nice. Yeah, but uh, for water samples, rather disappointing sometimes. Okay, so this is a little bit. This is a little bit the the, the thing. Yeah. Um, next question is: Can you add two filters together, like oblique illumination and Rheinberg? Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be a little bit difficult. I mean, what I can do. Uh, I mean, I have tried this. If you take 
uh, I'm going to show this to you later here. If you take something like this and you kind of shift it out a little bit, then you have a combination. This is a Weinberg filter. Then you have a combination of oblique and Weinberg. Okay. So um, that, that's, um, yeah, I think your question was maybe is to have a second filter um, over one that maybe gives you oblique and the other one over top. And um, I cannot do that with my setup because um, one of the filters would have to stay in place and the other filter you would have to move out. Yeah? So technically it's currently not possible with my setup. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, nice to see your stream again. Question about amoebas uh, with decent bright field. I never seen one. I uh, need face contrast. Okay, you can. I have also found amoeba with bright field. It is possible. Close the condenser all the way, especially if the amoeba have eaten algae, which are green. The problem with amoeba is is that they move slowly and therefore they are easy to overlook. So very often I've seen, oh my gosh, there are no amoeba there, but in reality they are there. But because they move so slowly, you, they, they kind of appear stationary and therefore they do not capture the attention. So what I recommend in this case is, is simply that you make a video for about five minutes or so um, and then you try to play it faster. Okay, you kind of speed it up and then you're able to see all of the movement. Yeah? So that is a little bit the, the issue with, uh, with, um, with slow moving organisms. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, why no ciliates here? Maybe this was the one with the with the uh, with the sample over here. Actually, I've seen uh, with the algae. There were actually some ciliates there, uh, Paramecium bezeri, but not many many of those. Yeah. Um, does it matter if the filters are exactly at the condenser third or below it? Actually, it's important. Okay. Um, the filters they have to be. Um, in the filter holder and not only that let me just show you again I don't know just for the sake of it maybe a different sample I'm going to show you some yeah radiolarians so that we don't always look at the same one that because the position the height of the the condenser is also important so um, these are radiolarians um, these are kind of also nice looking um, I need to kind of find them again just a second where are they here they are Okay, so this is uh, the commercial permanent slide. And these are kind of, uh, they're made of silica and uh, yeah, can be found in some sand. Very nice structures. And they are really good because they have a very big refractive index difference to the surrounding medium. So I'm going to put in now the dark field filter and I have to open the condenser again. I have to increase the light intensity and look. This is, those radiolarians are a very nice example uh, of specimens that work, re I think, really well. The, the depth of field is a little bit low now, yeah? but uh, they work really well with uh, dark field. Okay, so this is, a, this is a, a, a quite, uh, quite nice. Yeah? And uh, yeah, when we have, and there are a couple of those around. Uh, let me quickly check again the microscope. Maybe I'm able to find a place where there are more of them. Maybe, maybe these here, okay. So these are, yeah, shells, silica shells of, of, of some microbes. And uh, um, yeah, and let's now do, the, let's, let's just for, place an emphasis on this one over here and uh, Let's now carefully move out the filter again. Okay, we have to go down with the light intensity. And again, we have yeah, oblique illumination. Yeah, so you see actually now that it kind of looks like a, like a, I don't know, you see, almost like you see a relief, like a surface texture, yeah, with light coming from one side. So let's have a look now how this would actually look like uh, using a different filter, let's say the, a blue one. And uh, yeah, turn it up a little bit. Uh, it's uh, too dark. This blue one, it's dark blue. So um, it's a little bit too dark. So let's take the other one, which is a little bit less blue. Yeah. And basically it looks like this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if we try the red blue one, the Reidenberg one, let's see how this works. Okay, put that in here. Yeah. Mm, effect not very strong. You you should now see that actually the radiolarian is actually a little bit reddish. So uh, maybe I should have to, maybe I should use a more intensive red color. Uh, then maybe I'm able to get a stronger effect. 
Yeah. So um, again, a couple of questions. Um, okay. So yeah. So so far, um, there was a question here. Nice to see your stream again. Question about amoebas. Okay, that's the amoeba question. Um, do you use the oblique illumination disk in the filter holder? Uh, so is it not in the condenser turret? Uh, let's put it this way. Um, it depends which. Con um, okay. Um, the one that I have right now, I do not, this microscope does not have a turret. Um, a turret is a, um, there are some condensers where you can rotate, which you, like, uh, which you can rotate so that you're able to get different um, uh, filters. The one microscope that I have over there does not have a turret. It just has this, um, I'm just going to show you again, this filter holder here, okay, which you can move in. Um, and then it's basically in there. And if I want to have a different filter, I got to pull it out and exchange the filter. Yeah. And uh, if I pull it out halfway, then I get the oblique illumination. Yeah. But I don't have a, a rotating turret on this microscope here. I have a rotating turret on my other microscope, but in there, there are the DIC prisms. Yeah. So that's basically, yeah. Um, um, as I said at the beginning of uh, the live stream, some microscopes have a pop-on filter holder. Yeah. Um, and uh, this one is uh, from, from an old Olympus microscope. However, the many other microscopes, they have a swing out one. So there's a little hinge there and you can rotate it out. Yeah? And uh, this actually does have the advantage that you're, it's much easier for you to get oblique illumination. Yeah? If you don't have a, a, a swing out one, what you have to do then is, is you have to put in a, a, okay, the size here does not fit, as you can see, it doesn't matter, but you have to make yourself a filter where basically um, only one side, only one quarter maybe allows light to go through and everything else um, is dark. Okay, and then you have to experiment a little bit with the amount of, of, of with, and with the size of this one little slit uh, where you are able to get the light through. Yeah, um, it's I think it's easier. I found it easier um, to get oblique illumination with uh, the swing out ones. Okay, um, or this one over here because I'm able to continually adjust the position of the of the filter. Yeah. Um, and if, if that's not possible, then you have to make your filters with different, uh, yeah. So essentially what I, um, uh, some people are doing is this, uh, they make it completely black using black cardboard and then make a tiny hole um, on one side so that the light is able to go in from the side. Yeah? So a lot of uh, basically experimentation uh, to do, okay. Um, so, uh, do phase contrast condensers have to be compatible with a microscope? Would it work for Swift? Trans so, y y yes, um, that's the whole thing. If you um, get yourself a condenser, which uh, it's got to fit the microscope. Yeah? So that that's important. So, um, and unless unless the yeah, because it has to go into the stage here, and if the diameter doesn't match then you have a problem. Yeah? So that's one thing. And, and not only that, if you have a phase contrast condenser um, or with uh, phase contrast filters, then they also have to match the objective. So in many cases, what you have to do is you have to buy yourself a whole set. Yeah? Um, so this is a little bit the, 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 the thing. And uh, yeah, um, generally um, the companies will tell you if a microscope can be upgraded to phase contrast. So, but uh, because um, this is uh, phase contrast does have certain rather specific applications. Um, in most cases, um, yeah, you, you have to look around. There are not so many companies that, well, actually there are, um, but usually they don't sell it uh, so much over Amazon or Reddit, but you actually have to talk to the company itself directly and then they'll put together a set for you. Yeah? Um, I have a turret and filter holder under the turret. I wondered if I can use oblique etc. discs not inside the turret but in the filter holder. I need to check. I think yeah, please check because I've seen that so many microscopes are, are different, um, and uh, generally yeah, you you have to. And then also don't forget you have to also play with, uh, with the position of the um, of the condenser. You move it up and down. Okay, um, so this is a little bit uh, yeah, the the thing here. Yeah? Um, so. Um, let, let's move on um, before I forget. I want to show you a couple of other things here. Um, let's have a look at the radiolarians in DIC. Uh -huh, again, the camera switched off. Okay. 
so this is uh, the four times uh, magnifying objective ten times yep and uh, I don't know I have to find it first it's a little too dark where, where are you? Uh, here here they are but I want to find a place where there are more of them and nicer ones maybe uh, okay th this looks kind of nice here or this one yeah here these, these look nice so it's now the 10 times so and every time when you switch over I have to also change the, the thing here yeah and this is how it looks in DIC and then of course when I turn the knob here I can play around with with the colors yeah. Yeah. and when I go up to 40 times I have to also change this one here again you see it eats, uh, it eats so much light it, it's incredible yeah so and uh, yeah here again I can play around a little bit with the color again usually I leave it uh, yeah. blue yeah. so um, this kind of shows you a little bit uh, the the different uh, the different uh, uh, things that you can do yeah um, So uh, generally, what I recommend, uh, because sometimes people um, uh, also receive emails, they kind of they ask me, oh, but the image quality is not good. What am I doing wrong? And in reality, they're not doing anything wrong. Um, all you have to do is you have to increase the contrast a little bit using Photoshop or some kind of an image editing program. If you just adjust the contrast, then all of a sudden, sometimes images that look quite dull will appear to be surprisingly good. Yeah. So I'm just saying that 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 um, in, in this YouTube channel all of the videos that you see pretty much every clip that I've done I've done contrast adjustment you know, to to make it a little bit appear more crisp um, and then people are kind of surprised oh my gosh your microscope is so good and, and, and how are you doing that and I'm saying well actually no it's the original image quality is also not always that great yeah? um, it's a little bit dull in colors and I'm also increasing giving it a little bit more color saturation but not to the extent that it looks unnatural yeah? so this is really something that I can also recommend that, that you actually take the pictures that you have and, 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 and they try to do some um, automatic color color contrast okay so uh, no questions for me so far yeah um, I'll just uh, want to show you a couple of other things um, yeah oh yeah vitamin C I've got some vitamin C here that I'd like to show you uh, vitamin C I, I don't have it here yeah here it is um, you can buy um, in pure powder form so don't not the vitamin C tablets because they contain also a lot of other stuff but this is pure vitamin C powder and I'm just going to show you. This is how it looks like. It looks like sugar or like salt. Yeah. And uh, you don't want to eat that, obviously. Why not? Because you don't know how much to take in. Yeah. So you don't want to. You want to be careful. So usually this uh, can be used also as an antioxidant and a preservative and so on. But essentially, I dissolved a little bit in water and alcohol, and I put it on a slide here and I let it dry and crystals started to form. And we're now going to look at these crystals again using the different uh, techniques here because uh, again um, as you probably already know um, vitamin C crystals are very good in polarized light but we're gonna also have a look at dark field so so this here is bright field again yeah this is how it looks like so you can see the yeah, the crystals here directly on the slide some some yeah nice patterns but uh, of course the image looks rather black and white because the crystals in, in normal light they don't have a color so now let's add again okay um, where is it here at the dark field filter and we have to open the condenser again go up with the light intensity and this is how it looks like in dark field okay so you see that the, the specimen that the crystals they reflect the light in and everything else in the background is is black so it looks already significantly better so yeah um, I would say that this uh, for dark field this is a possibility let's uh, move out the dark field filter again a little bit and uh, let's see if uh, again here this is an oblique illumination and again we can see that yeah it looks like there is almost light striking it yeah, from one side and gives you again this kind of a structured 
um, impression. Yeah. So, but um, as I said before, um, I think we have to look at the whole thing using polarized light. Of course, uh, by the way, um, that would also be a possibility to take um, the uh, foil, polarization foil, and then actually put it in, in here. Yeah? And then also one on top, uh, that's also possible. Yeah? But uh, I didn't want to spend the time to cut it apart, and for this reason I just... Yeah? So, and I'm going to now take this one and put it directly on the vitamin C slide. Okay, directly on it. And now I'm rotating the, uh, the, the filter which I have over the lamp until the background becomes dark and it's completely out of focus. So I'm going to go again back into focus. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, until the background is completely dark. Yeah. And this is basically, uh, now we're also able to see colors. And then depending on how the crystals uh, have formed, uh, you can get all sorts of nice, nice patterns. Yeah. And usually what I would do in this case is uh, take a picture like this and then I go into Photoshop or GIMP or image editing program and I make sure that the black is really black. Okay. And uh, I give it usually a little bit of, of uh, yeah, increase the contrast a little bit to, to make the colors a little bit more saturated. Okay. Um, so this is a, a, yeah, a typical uh, specimen um, for polarized light. So just like the, like the, the potato starch grains, the crystals are, are some crystals um, are really nice. Okay. Um, okay, so far no questions for me. Uh, uh, maybe this is for me something different. You mentioned in a previous episode a book on algae identification I have had for many decades, an excellent book called The Freshwater Algae by Aha. Thank you for the recommendation. Okay. Um, I didn't I don't know this book, Freshwater Algae. So, so this is uh, basically the, the uh, yeah, yeah, polarized light. And uh, let's have a look uh, again, yeah, how this looks like. If I remove the filter, I have to go down a little bit with the, yeah, and uh, this again is in, in bright field. Yeah. Of course, it looks a little bit duller. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, so there's a question, why are you ignoring me? I hope I didn't, uh, uh, I hope I didn't ignore you. What was your question? Maybe I skipped it accidentally. Okay. Because there are so many comments, so it could be that I, yeah. So I'm, I'm going uh, back a little bit and I, yeah. Maybe you can state your question again so that I can address it. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, maybe maybe I overlooked uh, something here. So let's have a look. Um, what else do I have here? Yeah, um, I have uh, also here onion. Okay. Uh, let's have a look um, at some onion. And in this case, um, I would say we. Why don't we just go over again to my other microscope? And uh, yeah, let's remove this here and let's have a look at onion. I'm um, also in phase contrast, bright field and VIC. So, okay, it's a little bit too bright. Yeah. So let's start again here. This here is uh, bright field. So ear bubble, of course. It's uh, one of the standard uh, yeah, specimens here. I think uh, the onion is always a very good reference specimen. Yeah, so this here is uh, now the 20 times um, objective. Um, and um, yeah, let's have a, this is the wrong filter. So this here is now in DIC. Okay, again, we're able to adjust the colors a little bit here. And now let's have a look um, at, uh, yeah, at phase contrast. And this is how it looks in phase contrast. Okay. So um, we are able to see some deep, some structures that uh, we're probably not able to see before. Yes, those those lines, those uh, folds, yeah, possibly membrane folds or yeah. But um, yeah, 
Otherwise, obviously, uh, because uh, phase contrast converts uh, differences um, of refractive index into brightness, um, in this case, uh, of course, we do not see color. Yeah. So, yeah. and because uh, in phase contrast I have to open the condenser all the way, this of course reduces also the depth of field. Yeah. So let's have a look how this were to look now in yeah, in DIC again, and now I can close the condenser again, and this way I'm increasing all the depth of field. And every time when I close it, of course, the brightness goes down, and then I have to go up with the light intensity a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So this uh, shows again the different techniques and bright field. I'll just flip it out here, go down with the intensity again. Here we have the cells in bright field. Yeah. Okay, um, what time is it? Ooh, it's already one hour twenty. Ooh. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to. I'm quickly going through again the the thing here. Thank you for making all these amazing live streams. Okay, thank you for the thank you. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So do I have something else I want to show you? Um, I mean, I did I did not crystallize out. I, I tried to make some sugar uh, crystals here, and uh, yeah. So otherwise, I think I'm I'm through with pretty much all of the samples that I wanted to show you. Um, yeah, if you have uh, um, if you have any specific questions now that uh, you want me to answer, this is now uh, I think it would be now also a possibility. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, okay, because you're talking about the live streams. Yes, these live streams always make a Saturday be better. Thank you very much. Um, so basically, what I'm I'm just uh, trying to tell you. Um, I, li I love doing these live streams, <laughs> It's uh, of course, but I'll tell you what the difficult thing is. There's one really difficult thing is, is I, every week I'm uh, spending so much time thinking what could next live stream be about, okay? So this is a little bit the, the problem that I'm having is, is, is I want to show you something um, and uh, sometimes, um, yeah, I have, I don't know, last week, for example, I showed you some specimens with uh, from glacial snow, but it was not really exciting, you know, uh, all of a sudden I said, it's, I'm going to show it to you and I'm going to explore this together with you and then actually there was nothing really exciting to, to, to see there. So you see, um, it always depends a little bit on the specimens that I have, but if you have any suggestions of what you're interested in, then please do, do um, um, how do you say, um, uh, inform me on that, I'll try to pick this up and uh, some time ago uh, I was asked of wh whether I cannot do some kind of comparison of the different contrasting techniques. Yeah. So this is a little bit of a thing that um, I would like to encourage you, please write some comments um, so that I know what to kind of uh, show you the next time. Yeah, I don't know, I, these are for Manifera, maybe we can just, I did not show that to you yet, but maybe as, as a final thing here, forearms can also be found in some sand samples. Let's see if we, again, it's a little bit too bright. Yeah, but we have to find them first. Yeah, where are they? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'd have to kind of hunt them down a little bit. Um, not not such a good specimen here. Uh, but forearms are also shells of uh, microorganisms that can be found in some sand. But uh, yeah, here we'd have to look at them. Well, um, I don't know if this is such a good specimen here. Or maybe over here a little bit more occasionally we're able. And this is a, maybe a more of a typical of an example uh, of a sample that uh, would probably be benefit by, with a stereo microscope. Yeah. yeah, I think there are other more interesting uh, specimens here. Um, so um, I quickly go down the, the, the list here, the, the comments here. Yeah. Human tissue identification, uh -huh, yes. It's, uh, uh, how many microbes do you, do you have? Um, 
this question can be interpreted in many different ways. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, if you uh, want to, were to interpret it in such a way, how many microorganisms or how many different species of microorganisms are living on my body and in my body, then I can probably say probably thousands of different species um, because uh, we have actually, we humans have more microbes, bacteria specifically, living on our body and in our body, specifically our digestive system, than we have body cells. Uh, it's actually quite surprising. Yeah, so this is, uh, yeah. Um, I'm still terrible at preparing plant sections and using stains. I would love to see more about these. Okay, um, what I can try to do is, is uh, maybe in an upcoming uh, live stream, I can um, again pull out my microtome and do a couple of uh, plant cross sections. Uh, yeah, uh, the tardigrade suggestion above. Yeah, sure. Um, I have to, in this case, I'll get a moss sample. Um, and uh, um, in this case, it's usually better if we wait until um, it has been raining a little bit uh, for a few days because this is when the moss starts to absorb the moisture and the water and then all the tardigrades that have, uh, yeah, are in a dry state then they basically soak up the water and they come back to life again. Yeah? So usually I found it easier to find tardigrades um, after it's been raining for, for maybe two or three days because then uh, the tardigrades are able to also uh, come back to life and reproduce. Yeah? Autofluorescence. Yes, thank you for the recommendation. Autofluorescence works like this. Is it that you use UV light from a flashlight, for example, or from a UV LED or blue light, um, and then the algae and other green um, yeah, pigmented organ algae will start to glow red. Um, I tried this. Um, the effect is what I found relatively weak. So this means it's got to be completely dark. The specimen has to be left in darkness before and then when you basically shine ultraviolet light on those green algae, then they start to glow red because the chlorophyll starts to fluoresce. Um, and uh, that is called autofluorescence and I've been experimenting a little bit uh, with that um, but I'm not yet at that level that I can actually show it to you but I'm working on it and then when I'm ready then I'll um, show it to you okay um, yeah so autofluorescence too yeah I think that's a, a good uh, a good comment um, and uh, I somehow need to first optimize the technique a little bit. I was able to capture some autofluorescence uh, over long time exposure, um, but uh, the effect was so weak that uh, uh, yeah, I had to expose it for a longer time. So uh, it would look quite dark uh, otherwise if I were to do a live stream um, because the effect was not very strong, but I'm quite sure that um, I can somehow work this out. Yeah? So people, um, it's almost one and a half hours again. Um, I hope that you liked the live stream um, again. Um, thank you for the suggestions of what I can do in the upcoming videos. Uh, please do check the, um, the the comments, not the comments, the how do you call this, the community posts. There is a little bit uh, a blog, so to say, uh, in my uh, on the YouTube channel called the community posts. And if there are any um, uh, short-term announcements that I have to make because maybe the live stream has to be moved or so, because on short announcements I, I don't have time, then uh, basically I will post this um, in the community post. Okay. Um, otherwise, um, I want to wish you again a, a nice week. Um, thank you for for being here again, and uh, hope it was informative, and hope that those. Uh, things that I showed you kind of also motivate you again to, to do a little bit of experimentation, okay? Um, wish you still um, a nice weekend, happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, hopefully see you again next week. Bye-bye.